staying connected trees being or not being connected is a crucial property of graphs as any telecommunication company airline or railroad will tell you it is certainly desirable to be able to create a connected network with a relatively few agencies but one can intuitively feel that he will not be able to decrease the number of edges too much. For example, one edge will certainly not do if uh, the graph has more than two vertices. This chapter is uh, devoted to the study of uh, minimally connected graphs, which we will call trees. Minimally connected graphs. Theorem 10.1 let G be a connected simple graph on n vertices. Then the following are equivalent. 1. G is minimally connected. That is, if we remove any H of G, then the obtained graph G' prime will not be connected. 2. G does not contain a cycle. Before proving the theorem, let us give a name to this extremely useful class of graphs. Definition 10.2. A uh, connected simple graph G satisfying either and uh, therefore both criteria of theorem 10.1 is called a tree. Proof of theorem 10.1 from 1 to 2. Let us assume that G is uh, minimally connected, but it contains a cycle C. Remove uh, the H A B of C. We claim that G is still connected. Indeed, let X and Y be two vertices in G, as G was connected, G contain a path P from X to Y. If P did not contain the H A B, then it still connects X and Y. If P did contain A B, then let us replace A B by the other longer arc A B to get a new walk from X to Y. As uh, there is a walk from X to Y in G prime, there must also be a path, as we saw in exercise 23 of chapter 9. Therefore, G prime is connected, which is a contradiction. Proof from 2 to 1. We prove that the opposite of 1 implies the opposite of 2. That will suffice because it will imply that if a 2 holds, the opposite of 1 cannot hold, as that would imply the opposite of 2. Therefore, 1 has to hold. So 2 implies 1 will follow. Let us assume that G is not minimally connected. That means that there is an H in G, say AB, so that G prime equals to G minus the set of AB is still connected. Then there is a path P from B to A in G prime. However, a, B, union, P must then be a cycle in G as it defines a path that starts in A and ends in A, so G contains a cycle. Corollary 10.3 A connected graph H is a tree if and only if for each pair of vertices X, Y, there is exactly one path joining X and Y. Proof If for each pair of vertices X, Y, there is exactly one path joining X and Y, then H is minimally connected. Indeed, suppose you can omit HRS from H and get a connected graph. Then, in the original graph H, there were at least two paths from R to S, namely the HRS and the, the path that joins them in the new graph. Conversely, suppose H is a tree, but there are two paths P and Q joining vertices X, X and Y. Now take the symmetric difference of uh, P and Q, that is, the edges that are part of exactly one of P and Q. It is a straightforward to see that this symmetric difference will be a union of cycles, which is impossible in a tree. So trees are connected graphs that do not contain a cycle. An easy way to obtain a tree on n vertices is to take a full n vertex cycle on it, then to delete one edge. This will be a tree with n minus one edges. We can experiment for a while and draw trees of very different structures. 
Some of these are shown in figure 10.1. After some time, we start suspecting that all trees on n vertices have n minus 1 axes. The following theorem shows that even more is true. Theorem 10.4. All trees on n vertices have n minus 1 axes. Conversely, all connected graphs on n vertices with exactly n minus 1 axes are trees. In the proof of theorem 10.4, we will need the following lemma. Lemma 10.5. Let T be a tree on n vertices where n is greater than or equals to 2, then T has at least two vertices whose degree is 1. Pick any vertex V of T. Assume first that V is not of degree 1. Start working from walking from V to one of its neighbors X, then to a new neighbor of this neighbor X, and so on. Never revisiting a vertex already touched, as T is a finite graph, we will eventually have to stop at a vertex Z. We claim that the only reason for our having to stop at Z could be that Z is of degree 1. Indeed, the only possible other reason would be that Z has neighbors other than the neighbor Y we reached Z from, but they have all been visited already. However, that would mean that there are at least two paths from V to Z, and that cannot happen in a tree. So Z is of degree 1. To get another vertex of degree 1, remember that V was of degree more than 1. So take another neighbor U of V and repeat this argument. This will result in any vertex T of degree 1, and T is not equal to Z, as that would again yield two paths from V to Z. Now, note that we can always find a vertex V with degree at least 2 in T. Pick any vertex. If it is of degree more than 1, fine. If not, take its only neighbor, except when T is a two-vertex tree that consists of only one H. For that one tree, the statement is trivially true, so the lemma is proved. Vertices of trees that have degree 1 are called leaves. Now we are ready to prove theorem 10.4. Proof of theorem 10.4. We use induction on n. If n is equal to 1, the statement is trivially true as... Uh, one vertex cycle free graph has no axes. Let us assume that the statement is true for trees on n vertices. Let T be a tree on n plus 1 vertices. Find a leaf L in T. The previous lemma ensures the existence of two leaves, then delete L and uh, the only the H E adjacent to it from T to get a new tree T prime. Note that T prime is always a tree as it is connected and cycle free. This new tree T prime has n vertices, so by the induction hypothesis, it has n minus one axes. But then T is equal to T prime union E has n axes, and uh, the theorem is proved. Just as in nature, a set of trees. It's called a, a forest. So a forest is a graph in which each connected component is a tree. This hopefully explains the cover page illustration of this book. Some of the following theorems might explain the wandering lost facial expression of the person shown in that picture as he's walking through the woods. Proposition 10.6. Let F be a forest on N vertices with k connected components, then f has n minus k axes. Proof by theorem 10.4, the number of uh, vertices exceed that of axes by 1 in each connected component, and uh, the proof follows. How many trees are there on n vertices. 
After reading section 9.3, we know that uh, there are at least two ways to interpret this question. One is when the vertices are indistinguishable, and uh, then the two trees shown in figure 10.2 are considered the same. An exact formula answering this question is not known, and uh, the other is when the vertices are indistinguishable. Uh, when the vertices are distinguishable. In this case, we can say that we are counting all trees with vertex, vertex set and braces. In this case, the, tree, the two trees in figure 10.2 are considered different. Trying the first few values of n, one sees that there is one tree in one braces, one tree on two braces, there are three trees on three braces, and uh, 16 trees on four braces. After this, we might find enumerating all trees on n braces by hand cumbersome. These scarce data suggest that there are n to the n minus 2 trees on n braces, but the reader may think that this was far too little data and that it is very unlikely that such an incredibly nice closed formula would exist for the number of things as diverse as all trees on embraces. In most, the case, the, in most the cases, the reader would be right to make such an argument. The dreaded law of small numbers says that if we know just a few elements of a sequence, and uh, those elements are small numbers, then you can always find a nice formula that is uh, verified by those first few elements, but is incorrect in general. This case, however, is the exception. Theorem 10.7, Cayley's formula. For any positive integer n, the number of all trees with vertex set n braces is Tn, which is equal to n to the n minus 2. This beautiful result has received its fair share of attention and has at least 16 known proofs. Many of them require additional knowledge. Here we cover what may be the shortest proof on books and is due to Andrew Joyo. Several other proofs will be included in the exercises. While reading the proof, the reader is encouraged to study the example immediately following it. Proof of theorem 10.7. Take all TN trees on N braces, and in each of them, choose two vertices, which do not have to be different, and call one of them start, and the other one end. Do this in all possible n square ways for each tree. Call the, the n square times TN object obtained this way, doubly rooted trees. We are going to show that the number of uh, doubly rooted trees on n braces is n to the n by constructing a bijection from the set of all functions from n braces to n braces to that of doubly rooted trees on n braces. This will prove our theorem. Let f be a function from n braces to n braces. Let c, which is a subset equals to n braces, be the subset of elements x in n braces which are part of a cycle under the action of f, that is for which there is a positive integer i so that f to the i of x which is equal to x. Let c equals to the set c1 which is less than c2 which is less than c3 and so on which is less than ck. The subset of, f of elements which are part of the cycle on the, the action of f. Now let di, which is equal to f of ci, and uh, write the integers d1, d2, d3, and dk in this order to the nodes of a tree consisting of one link of uh, k vertices. In other words, we write down the elements of c in the order given by the permutation that is the product of the cycles of c. Also, we mark d1 by start and dk by end. Finally, if uh, j is in n braces but j is not in c, then join the vertex j to the vertex f of j by an h. This way we always get a tree 
indeed we get a connected graph as the start end line is con connected to all vertices. And we get a cycle free graph as are the only cycles created by F involved vertices from C and C corresponds to a single line. The tree is doubly rooted as the vertices start and end are marked. To see that this is a bijection, take a doubly rooted tree on N braces. For vertices J, not on the start end line, define F of J to be the first neighbor of J on the unique path from J to the start end line. For the vertices on the start end line, define F so that the image of the i smallest of them is the one that is in the i position from start. This shows that there is exactly one function f which maps from embraces to embraces corresponding to each doubly rooted tree, and our theorem is proved. Example 10.8 Let n equals to 8, and let f which maps from 8 braces to 8 braces be the function defined by f of 1 is equal to 3, f of 2 is equal to 4, and uh, f of 3 is equal to 1, f of 4 is equal to 5, f of 5 is equal to 5, f of 6 is equal to 7, f of 7 is equal to 8, f of 8 is equal to 6. Then the action of f is shown in figure 10.3. The function f creates uh, the cycles 1, 3, 5, and 6, 7, 8. Therefore, c is equal to 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, d1 is equal to 3, d2 is equal to 1, d3 is equal to 5, d4 is equal to 7, d5 is equal to 8, and d6 is equal to 6. Therefore, our start end line will contain the integers 3, 1, 5, 7, 8, and 6 in this order, as uh, f of 2 is equal to 4, and f of 4 is equal to 5, we connect the vertex 2 to 4 and the vertex 4 to 5. The obtained doubly rooted tree is shown in figure 10.4. To the analogy of doubly rooted trees, we can define the rooted trees, which are trees with one vertex called the root. So the number of the rooted trees on n braces is n to the n minus 1. A rooted forest is a forest in which each component is a rooted tree. Corollary 10.9 For all positive integers n, the number of rooted forests on n braces is n plus 1 to the n minus 1. Proof. Take a rooted forest on n braces and join all roots to the new vertex n plus 1 by an edge. This transforms the original rooted forest to an unrooted tree on n plus 1 braces. This map is a bijection. Given a tree on n plus 1 braces, we can simply mark all neighbors of n plus 1 as roots then delete all edges adjacent to n plus 1 to get the original rooted forest on n braces back. So the set of all rooted forests on n braces is in a bijection. With uh, that of all trees on n plus 1 braces, therefore they are equinumerous. Theorem 10.7 then shows that each of them has n plus 1 to the n minus 1 elements. And 